w- were there any of those characters that were based on people that, that were in your circle? The guy Leon, he kind of, you know, like my, my partner Al, you know, Al was, was a crip and, you know, he liked the guns and, 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 and Leon was kind of like that as well. <clears throat> so, uh, maybe that. I, I, it's hard for me to remember, right? Because I only watch, I only watch like maybe one and a half season, and 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 I honestly can't remember much. Uh, but I saw plots in the in the story where it was one way in my story, but they flipped it a little bit to make it uh, um, similar, but not the same. Gotcha. Uh, what those what those were right now. I really couldn't, uh, um, I couldn't explain that to you right now because I, I don't remember, you know, uh, um, it, it was hard for me to watch the show, man. I, I mean, I, I really don't see how people felt so, so highly about the show, you know, um, I don't know. I just don't see it. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't resonate with me, you know, why people liked it so much. Uh, other than the violence and, and, you know, I know people are fascinated with drug dealers, uh, but other than those, those are the only two elements that, that I saw in the, in the show that really uh, would have made me want to watch it. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like watching uh, cartoons. You know, I don't watch Daffy Duck and, and Mickey Mouse and none of those type of shows. So, it kind of reminded me of a cartoon, you know, some of the stuff they was doing was almost cartoonish, you know. You, you see a guy hanging in, in South Central, hanging from a telephone pole, and, and these guys are standing there watching him hang, and, you know, and they punishing him for something he had did. And I'm like, man, come on, man. They'd have every helicopter and police in, in town would be parked right at that building, you know. It just, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a real L.A. story. And, and, and I think that that's what we want to see. We want to see a real, true L.A. story. You know, what happened? What clubs was they going to? You know, uh, what car washes was they hanging out at? They, don't in, they didn't know none of that. So they couldn't put none of that in there. You know, the car washes used to be, our car washes used to be like nightclubs. You know, guys being there gambling, shooting you know, a hundred thousand dollar one roll on on the dice. You know, uh, we used to play ping pong games, forty thousand dollar, you know, pot. You know, stuff that 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 what we call well, that's what we thought was fun. You know, we wasn't out pulling no pistols on nobody, shooting up everybody, man. That that it wouldn't have played. It, that that wouldn't have played in L.A. You know, L.A. ain't played that in a long time. You know, maybe in 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 one of those backwood country towns. Something you can do that, but not here in LA. No. You mentioned a hundred k a roll for dice. That that was something you guys actually did. I didn't, but other guys did. You know, I, I wasn't I wasn't a gambler. I gambled on ping pong because I was a good ping pong player. So so I would put my money on on ping pong, then nobody could beat me. How much would you bet? I think the biggest pot we did one time was like forty five thousand. But it, it didn't start off at 45. It kept, you know, bet, bet 10 more, bet 10 more, you know, bet, bet I'm going to come back, you know, that kind of, and it just, the pot just grew, you know. But we used to play all the time for like $5,000, $4,000, you know. Okay, okay. I, you know, uh, one thing that happened in the show was the dude Franklin, he took a, a couple really big losses. Like one time, uh, a guy took off with like $5 million. Then, you know, the CIA guy stole $73 million. Is there anything that happens similar to that in your real story? No. No. Never. Is there any big I losses I never had that you $75 took? million. Dollars. What happened? I said I never had $75 million. They played with some big numbers. <laughs> Yeah, $75 okay. million. Dollars. He was playing real big. 
No, nah, but is there any big? And, but you know, and then and then like you hear that, you know, they 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 plan with seventy five million dollars, but they working with five kilos of cocaine. Like, you can't make no seventy five million dollars with no five kilos of cocaine, man. Get out of here. You know who you selling cocaine to? It's just it's just <laughs> stuff that didn't make sense, you know. But uh, an audience that's not really smart or not paying attention, that those kind of things will go over their head. But you know, when when I hear them talk about how many kilos they had and how much money they they was they was working with, and re- automatically, cause I I know the numbers, and I'll be like, oh no, that's bullshit. You know, and if it's bullshit, I don't want I don't want none of it. They could have at least did the math right. Exactly. So so it shows you that they didn't really sit down and 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 make the plot. You know, the way it should have been. But that goes again because they have people who who never. Uh, wasn't in the game, you know. Well, were there any big losses that you took when you were selling? Well, I took a lot of losses, you know. I, I used to get dope out on credit. So, you know, people would run off all the time. Uh, I've loaned people a lot of money, uh, but not, nothing like that there. My biggest loss was $600,000 that, that I loaned somebody. Wow, you loan somebody six hundred grand? Damn. Yep. How'd you how'd you loan it to him? Like, like just for drugs or what was it? No, for? no, 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 no. This was uh, Otis Smith when he was uh, he was doing Anita Baker's album. That's right. I I did see that that you funded pretty much funded her first album. Yep. Never got and never got a nothing in return. Nothing in return. Well, what happened is is she jumped the label. Uh, apparently, uh, Otis wasn't paying her either. Otis just didn't pay. <laughs> but that whole little incident is 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 one of the reasons that 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 uh, that I believe it was the reason that that stopped me from being the king of hip hop. Without without that happening, I I probably would have would have wound up being the king of hip hop because I I was tampering with with rap music back then as well, and uh, Otis Smith used to used to pay for my tennis shoes and buy me rackets and stuff when I was a kid playing tennis, and I ran into him one day at in Santa Monica at a tennis tournament, and I saved his life, and uh, for me saving his life he. He took my money. <laughs> he, he returned the favor. You know they say no no good deed go unpaid. Well, when 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 that happened, he he exposed to me that he was in the record business. So um, and gave you the opportunity to invest. Exactly. Which wasn't really an opportunity. Well, it could have been right. I, I I didn't really I didn't really do my part right because they you know it, uh, you remember Dick Griffey? I I know the name. Yeah, yep. with him and Dick, they both begged me to quit selling dope. They was like, man, if you quit selling dope, you'll run the record business. And and you know those were the first two independent uh, labels uh, uh, in, in the game: Beverly Glam Music and uh, Solar. And they asked me to quit selling dope, but I wouldn't do it. I was like, shit, if I quit selling dope, I'm going to be like, y'all, broke. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.